Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my branding iron. I have already done one video on how I use it and just how it reacts to different materials and I will link that somewhere either in either top corner. I'll also link it in the description box below. So if you wanna watch how the branding iron works and like temperatures that I use and just testing it on different fabrics, watch that video. This is gonna be a video more on how I've progressed and how I use it now because I have adopted a new method. So through the years, I have gone through the gamut, the whole run of different types of labels. I've used um, custom woven labels that I had to sew in before starting a project. And then I switched to wooden tags that had, they were engraved. And so this is real wood, um, which I really liked these, but I just thought they were a little big and, um, not an eyesore because I like the way they look, but they always drew your eye exactly to the label. And I know a lot of people don't like obvious labeling. So then I switched, I had wooden tags, but it was just the narwhal cutout. And I did like those, those are really cool. And I couldn't find um, an example to show you of that. But so I used those, but then what was happening is the horn on my narwhal up here would peel. And eventually with a lot of use, this wood will crack. And so, I decided that this wasn't really economical. What was nice about these is that I could stick them on once my project was done. So you never run into that issue of forgetting to label your item. So then from there, just because I was wanting to get away from the wood look, I started using engraved cork tags. This is one that I used and ripped off. So it's a little, it's a little rough around the edges, literally. But so I use these for a long time and you can get the all different color corks. Um, I get these from All This Wood on Etsy. They're extremely fast. They are priced um, competitively. Uh, cork tags can be a little expensive over time. Um, but yeah, so I was using these and then I also had smaller ones with just the narwhal as well. And the problem that I would run into is I would forget to label my items. And so I wanted to find something that I can use that over time would be more cost effective and that I could use for a lot longer and I could just have one look and it would be used on every single item. And so that's what brought me to a branding iron. Um, I got my branding iron and I ordered it in December of 2019. So now we're rounding up two and a half years, almost three years using this. Three, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, almost three years, wow. So. I ordered my branding iron from Branding Iron Unlimited and of course again reference that original video before if you want to know more about that specific setup. But so that came with a custom branding head which I'll show you in a little bit um, with my logo. So it is this logo with the words and or with the letters and everything just like that and it came with the handheld branding iron and so the head attaches right there and there's like an on off switch here. And then this attaches to the temperature control box. And this worked really well for a long time. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. However, I was not getting cohesive brands every single time because if the brand was slightly, if I put too much pressure on the left or too much pressure on the right, you know, one side of it would, it was just uneven. I couldn't get it to be equal and I'm a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like that. And so I was going through a lot of cork and a lot of pieces to get the proper brand. And also when I got the braiding iron, I had this notion that I would be able to just batch sew a bunch of wallets and then I could brand them all at the end. Well, because I wasn't getting cohesive brands, that made me really nervous because I didn't want to spend the time constructing an entire wallet and then ruin it with the brand. So what I started doing is I'll cut out all of my wallet pieces or all of whatever I'm making and then I brand it first. So this is it on brown cork and you can see it leaves a nice subtle imprint. You can feel it, but it's not overly obvious. And I know a lot of people are weird about tags and labels. So I liked that look. Here it is on the eggplant cork. And because this eggplant is a little more dimpled, it's kind of harder to see, but it's in there and then here it is on olive, and this is really dimpled cork, but I still love the way that it looks. It, it's easier to see in person, and it, while it's, it's obvious, but it's so, so subtle. Now, I do that intentionally. You can burn the cork. You can make it look a lot more 
obvious. So like on this bag, oh, I can't see, but see on this one, it actually burnt the cork. And that's the entire reason that I kept this bag because I had cut out this entire overlay piece. It's all one big piece. And I wasn't about to ruin the cork or recut it, but this is not usually the look that I go for. I like the subtle imprint. However, it's mind boggling because, you know, I take in people's requests and I hear their comments when I'm vending and hands down, everybody's always says, Oh, I love that brand. I love that brand. So it, I think maybe people might like it if I burnt the cork a little more to make it more obvious. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I got myself a new bag, which is great because now I've been test driving this. And if you haven't made this bag, it's the Oral Rosa Luna Retro. Highly suggest. I made mine at 90%. I just published a sew along my last set of videos, so be sure to go back and watch those. But so all that being said, you can mess with the temperature. You can make it hotter or you can make it not as hot and have it be subtle. And you can just play around. And so when I was doing the handheld, I always used a wooden cutting board and you can see where I set the brand down all over it. And all of these little tiny sonars, all of this black, all these black markings, that's, that all says sonar. So that's the bottom of my brand. And what was happening was when I was holding a piece of cork onto the wood, it would kind of almost go all the way. Sometimes it would go all the way through the cork and it would, you know, you could see through it because I branded straight through the backing. So that was what I was trying to avoid. And in my quest to not throw away this expensive piece of machinery, I discovered a press. So I was researching heat presses. They're called foil pressing, um, foil embossing machines. There's a plethora of search terms that you can use, but I went with a, a, a small size heat press and then I took my branding head that I previously had made from Branding Irons Unlimited and I attached it to the press. And so before I go though, to get the press, I'll just give you a little bit of price breakdown. So this press or this um, branding iron from Branding Irons Unlimited, plus the temperature control box, plus the custom branding head, which technically was a size small, I paid $331. So this was not a cheap investment. So I really wanted to be able to use it in a way that I felt more comfortable and I knew that I would get a cohesive look across all of my pieces. And that's what brought me to this. So this is the heat press that I chose. You can see, given the size of my hand, this is not a large heat press. This base, this is the base plate. The base plate has a bunch of measurements on it that are in centimeters. And then it has this, which is the heating plate here. And then under here, you can see that's my actual branding iron, or that's like the, the branding head. So the branding head attaches underneath with a screw right here. And then what happens is when you turn the machine on, sorry if you see the back of my head. Oops. So you turn the machine on and the temperature control box comes on. Now this temperature control box tells you the green number is what I want it to be heated up to. You can see I have mine at 275. And then the red on top is how hot it actually is. And so you can see right now it's kind of malfunctioning. It's going 13, 12, 13. And really it should be climbing and jumping. There it goes. I, I'm kind of glad that this is doing this so, because this brings me to my issue with this press. Um, I don't remember offhand how much I paid for the press. I'll look it up for the end of the video. I will tell you. But again, not a cheap investment. Um, overall, much cheaper than a lot of heat presses that I found. However, it took several months to get to me. It arrived to me, the temperature box didn't work. So then I had to deal with the company and get a new temperature box. And then they provided no instructions on how to fix it. And luckily one of my best friends is an electrician. So he came over and swapped out the temperature box. Okay, we're good to go. A few months later, same thing happened. Temperature box stopped working. And then I had to fight with them on it to send me more. So eventually they just sent me three temperature boxes. So if that doesn't tell you a little bit about the quality of the machine, then I'm not sure what will, because they just sent me, they sent me new heating rods. So the, the way that it heats up 
is this these heating rods here heat up this plate down here which in turn heats up the head my my brand that's attached underneath um and then to actually heat press something you just pull this lever and it lays down on whatever piece you're pressing i got this machine from zone sun on etsy and i do not recommend working with them it's z-o-n-e-s-u-n if you can avoid it don't order from them you can get the same exact machine from several other companies and i would suggest reading reviews and making sure that they have good customer service before you invest the money so now this brings me to the actual heating the the branding head itself so the branding iron that i originally ordered was set to fit this 3 8 screw now when i ordered this machine i Two times before ordering it confirmed that my 3 8 thread would fit into this machine they told me without a doubt absolutely it would well that was another issue when i arrived when the machine arrived my branding head did not fit so i put brandon on it and i said babe i need you to get this to fit this and so he was able to figure out um we had to put like a spacer inside the branding head because this is thinner and you, yeah so he figured that out for me um it is a huge pain in the butt if something comes undone I'll turn this off um you can see you see the the red coil that's the heating elements this is really hot that coil is supposed to be all the way in and i didn't realize it until i turned it on um so that was a huge pain in the butt but now that i have that worked out it worked it's it's okay. However, if I ever want to trade out the head and do letters, because that was something that I ordered. When I got my machine, I got the machine that has a second plate. So it has another, I should have prepared a little better, but here we go. So it came with this second heat plate and this heat plate slides right here. But it's not going to slide right now because my actual brand is under there, but it slides and it holds on. And then it came with this guy and I can put letters and I can brand names and numbers and things like that as well. This is a little bit tricky because everything is upside down backwards. So it's kind of a mental game that you have to figure out. But like I just made one for my new niece, Artemis. I made her a binky holder and I branded it for her. But so when I got this machine, I wanted to be able to do names. I wanted to be able to do numbers and do customizations and things like that. And the company did make my font that I wanted. They let me request the font and I was able to get a larger font because the numbers and letters that come with it are, I don't remember offhand. I don't remember how small, they're smaller. They're significantly smaller than what I ordered. And mine are basically three quarter inch tall. And I think theirs are like half inch. So I wanted something bigger. But so that was cool. The company let me customize my font. They let me customize how large I wanted it. And they worked with me on that. They were really, really responsive until I received the machine. Up until receiving the machine and talking through all of the specifics on the customizations, they were on it. But as soon as I received it and things started malfunctioning, they just stopped caring. Um, so basically that's it. That's what I use. Um, I do keep my handheld branding iron because this one does fail semi-regularly. It's been a, it's been a while since something has gone out, but you can see, I don't even put, this has a case that goes on top of it and I don't even keep the case on it because this temperature box does malfunction so often that I have to replace it a lot. So I just leave it off. Um, I find that when I'm traveling with it and like jostling it around. It tweaks all these wires, which is to be expected, but that also messes with um, how well it works. Another thing is that the temperature itself, like when I had it on and it said 275, it's not actually reaching 275 degrees. It's off on the actual heat, but I just played with that heat higher and lower until I found a a heat temperature that I liked the look of the brand on the cork. And so I played with the length of time that I hold it and, you know, again, playing with the actual heat temperature until I figured out what I like. So now I have it set for 275. I hold it down and I put a lot of pressure. I'm, I'm holding, I generally do this and just count between eight and 10. 
and then it leaves a nice imprint on the cork. So before I end the video, I pulled up the invoice and my email correspondence with Zone Sun during this whole process. And so I ordered the press at the end of 2020. So it was during the pandemic. Um, it was, I think, I, I, it was the end of 2020. I've received it in February of 2021. And by September of 2021, I had to replace three different pieces of the, the press. I had to replace the control box twice, the temperature control box twice, and I had to replace the heating coils that I showed you that was like bright red that wasn't pushed all the way in. And ever since then, it's been good. I haven't had any overall major issues. And I will say though, that since I have been using the press for so long, I've gotten more comfortable with it. And so if things aren't working exactly how they're supposed to, I will kind of tweak the wires and mess with it. And that generally gets things going again. And the runaround that I was getting was what was so frustrating to me because they, I would contact customer service and then one person would respond and then he would tell me to talk to this other person. Well, then that person would send me back to the, to the original sales and then they wanted me to talk to after sale. And it was just such a runaround. We had to do WhatsApp conversations. I had to submit videos to get help. And then when they would send replacement parts, they wouldn't give me any information on how to replace them. So it was just a super, super frustrating ordeal. And um, I just, if I ever need to upgrade or get a different press, I just absolutely will not order from them. And I do not suggest ordering from them. There are several other places that you can order these machines. The one that I got is the ZS-100 and there are lots of different model numbers. You can get different size plates. You can get different add-ons. Um, my machine does have the foil rack and it's supposed to be able to like gold leaf things, but that I have not had any success with. I just use the branding side of it. Um, but yes, you can find these machines on Etsy. You can find them on Amazon. Um, Weaver Leather in the U.S. sells them. They're just a bit more expensive, but you're probably, it'll be a much smoother purchasing process. Um, I will say I found Zone Sun on Etsy and then I intentionally went to their standalone website because I was trying to help them avoid Etsy fees. And that is really what bit me in the butt because had I stayed on Etsy and processed, I would have had more buyer protections. So if you do find a press that you like online, I would just check the buyer protections and make sure that they're a reputable company. Um, all in all, I paid $414 for my press and for my font for all of my, my alphabets. I got uppercase and lowercase and the numbers. Um, and then I paid 331 for the handheld iron. So, you know, just shy of $900 on this total investment. And doing the math on the court labels, I think I would get 100 labels for 50 bucks or somewhere in that realm. Um, and so it probably, if it hasn't paid for itself, it will be paying for itself this year. So overall, I am happy with the investment. I do think that personally, I would skip the handheld and I'd go straight for a press. I would just find a more reputable company and I would get my custom branding head made from that same exact company so that you don't have the same stress and headache of trying to retrofit your branding head with the screw size. So let me know if you have any questions. I will do my very best to answer. No guarantees because I am not a pro in this at all as I think I've made clear. I really don't know a lot about the machine. I just turn it on and it works. Um, but I will say I, I love the brand. I think it's a really great, nice, subtle way to make, to mark my pieces and make them my own, but also not being like ostentatious and just loud. You know, I'm, I'm more for the easier on the eyes. Um, but yeah, that being said, I do keep stock of these cork labels because sometimes I just really like the look of them. So, I mean, I do think it's best to have a wide array, but anyways, I'm going off track here. If you have any questions about the brand, Branding Iron, um, the company that I worked with, the other company, Branding Iron Unlimited, they were amazing. They were incredible, super quick, really great turnaround times, uh, very comprehensive conversations. If I ever had any issues, they were on the ball. So I can't recommend them more. And then Zone Sun on them, but yeah. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I hope that this answered and kind of walked you through my process. And um, yeah, be sure to subscribe, like, and do all that crap. You know the deal. Bye, guys.